Did you know that the water you drink every single day could be affecting your thyroid health, could be affecting your bones, it may even be affecting IQ levels in your children. If this is a concern for you as it is for me, then listen up because I'm gonna tell you, first of all, why the water could be dangerous and what you're going to do about it. This all goes back to some 1940s changes in our municipal water supplies. At that time, they had figured out that fluoride could strengthen teeth. And I don't dispute that, it is true. Fluoride does create a harder crystal in tooth enamel. So if it made teeth stronger, the idea is that it would prevent cavities and prevent tooth decay. So the first idea of adding it to our water was simply to help us eradicate tooth decay, to eradicate cavities in our lives. Now I'll contend that it actually hasn't worked, right? There's still a lot of tooth decay in our world today, so there obviously are other things that go into cavities other than just if we have enough fluoride or not. Lots of information about that that I've shared. But really, this idea of putting something in our water that medicates or treats every single one of us for something that maybe we don't need is a real problem. Fluoride is still in the water today, not in every water source. So what you can do to find out if it is in yours is to actually check with your city and ask, has fluoride been added to the water here at this place that I live? It's not everywhere, but it is actually fairly rampant through a lot of cities. Not only that, but we're getting fluoride through any processed products that have been made with fluoridated water where that processing happened. This is something that sneaks into our bodies without us really knowing why or how or really importantly, how much. So if this is your situation, if you have fluoride in your water and you want it out because you can't control the amount, because you don't like the side effects, because you don't need it, which are all very valid reasons, then let me teach you how. So the interesting thing about fluoride is it's not very big. So a lot of the filtration systems that you might use, like the pitchers that we keep in our refrigerator, those kinds of things, they actually aren't adequate to remove fluoride from the water. The filtration system that is coming through your fridge for your ice, all of those things aren't removing fluoride. The fluoride's making it through. So what can remove fluoride? There are three methods that you can use. The first is called reverse osmosis. And what that does is it does remove about 95% of the fluoride. It pushes the water through a very fine filter. The problem with reverse osmosis is it, it does waste a lot of water in the process of removing the things that we don't want. And the other even bigger issue with reverse osmosis is that it leaves the water in what I call a hungry state. It doesn't have any minerals in it at all. The body needs minerals. The water needs minerals to balance it. So it literally will pull minerals from you to balance itself. This is a problem. So if you're going to use reverse osmosis water, you need to add minerals back in. We'll put some links below on some places that you can go to get minerals. But a liquid mineral is really what I'm talking about. You need to add that back to the water if you're drinking it, if you're using it for cooking. Now, another removal source or removal method that is in the same situation is distillation. You can use distilled water also, but distilled water is the same. It is hungry. Everything has been removed, all of the good minerals also. So you must add minerals back if you're drinking distilled water, either drinking or using it for cooking purposes. So both of those, yes, remove fluoride, but can create other issues down the road as well. Some people also use a water alkalizer, Oftentimes, it's been through a reverse osmosis process first before alkalizing. Well, this can create double problems. First of all, it doesn't have minerals because of the reverse osmosis process. Alkalizing also leads to water that in your stomach dilutes your stomach acidity, which can lead to lower mineral absorption from your food. So you do not drink alkaline water with food. Otherwise, you will not absorb food properly. So these are just things you need to know about water. There is another process called an activated alumina filter. A real common brand was called Berkey in the past. Now Berkey had some problems legally and they went out of business. I've heard they are coming back into business, perhaps under another name. So look into the activated alumina filters. They are very good at also removing fluoride, but they don't remove minerals. So they're actually my favorite. All the other carbon filters do not do enough to remove fluoride. This is all information for you on how to keep your water safe for your body, for your overall health. There's going to be links below. Check those out. What's the alternative to fluoride? 
hydroxyapatite. I talk about this all the time. Hydroxyapatite strengthens teeth, helps to prevent tooth decay without all the other side effects. And you certainly don't need to put it in your water. You're going to use it in a tooth powder, in our mouthwash. You're going to feed your body and your teeth minerals from the outside so that you can prevent tooth decay overall without having to need fluoride at all. This is information that you need to know if you're drinking water. Check on your water. Check on your water supply. Does it have fluoride in it? If so, start using one of these methods, making sure you're doing it the right way for your overall health as well. If you like this information, please subscribe, click on the links below, check out sourcing here to help. And we want you to be able to have healthy teeth and a healthy body without the side effects that come with things like fluoride.